finishing this comic, it's easy to assume that this entire story was all about Mandy just discovering who she really is. It would be easy to assume that this tale was all about Mandy's coming of age. It would be easy to assume that this tale is focused on Mandy learning more about her mother. But yeah, no. That's not what this comic is about. This comic is not about growing or becoming a better person or family member or and none of that bullshit. It's not it's not about any of that. Let me tell you what the point of this comic is. Let me tell you. Everything revolves around Mandy. Everything. Uh, honestly, I, I don't even know why I'm saying Mandy anymore. I should just say Mariko Tamaki. Nobody is stupid here. Everything that happens in this novel, outside of stupid superhero bullshit, is clearly just her shoving her own personal bad memories into the damn comic. Throughout the entire comic, the story seems to revolve around this pig animal's high school life and how bad of a person she is towards other people. You would figure, what with all this buildup, that the story would be about Mandy's journey to become a non ass asshole, right? Wrong. The narrative suddenly twists around and instantly rewards this swine, and her entire life gets turned right side up as a result of it. It's so weird how the narrative starts off with stupid teenage issues, then suddenly gets into superhero business at the last possible second. Almost as if Tomiki wrote this garbage, illustrating her own adolescent trauma from the past, then suddenly remembered that this was a superhero comic, so she just threw in some nonsense at the last possible second to remind you that this is a superhero comic. Y you know, the same way you like, have a PowerPoint presentation school project that you need to complete, and you forgot that you needed to add transitions, so you throw a bunch in at the last few slides to make sure you get a decent grade. I can just imagine her making the stupid ass shit. I, I can imagine her thought processes, right? Uh, Alright guys, here's my story pitch. There's this girl who's literally me, right? And, and she hates school and her mom's a slutty asshole. And she has to deal with so much bullshit in school just like me. But, but that's okay because she's an epic girl boss in school. Yeah, just like me. Just like how I was. She, she's not like other girls. She stands out from the pack. She's so goth and badass. And she listens to edgelord music. Da -na, da -na 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 I, I don't remember the name of the song. Re oh yeah, and remember the girl that I liked a lot in school back in high school decades ago and how I never had the self-confidence to speak to her? Yeah, well, in this comic, I get the girl. I win. I always win. I win everything because I deserve to always win. Oh, wait, that's right. This is a superhero comic. I forgot. Uh, well, um, also Starfire's in it and also Blackfire's in it and yeah, w whatever. Who cares? I win. I win. I get everything I want. I deserve everything I want. <sighs> I hate this goddamn comic, dude. So, about Mandy, she never learns anything or has to grow to overcome a conflict a single solitary time in this book. Want to know why? Because she needs to be a bright shining symbol for whatever the author wants to display. And what does the author want to display? That everything revolves around her. So, about the cookie-cutter love interest girl Claire. Claire took a picture of herself with the Teen Titans, while unaware of the fact that Mandy does not like them. She was unaware of the fact that Mandy hates her mom and has a general dislike towards the Teen Titans. And Mandy knows this. She knows that she is not aware of her dislike towards them. But that does not stop her from being a fucking cursing her out and getting mad at her for completely insignificant shit. I want to repeat that. Mandy is totally aware of the fact that she knows Claire is not familiarized with her hatred towards the Teen Titans and her mom and her issues towards them. And guess what the f**k happens? Mandy doesn't need to apologize. Mandy has no need to feel bad or remorseful or any of that. It's Claire that has to approach Mandy and kneel before her and apologize. It's not Mandy that needs to apologize or show any form of recompense in any way, despite her cursing her the f out and telling her off on some petty nonsense. There's somewhat of a retcon. Claire suddenly says out of nowhere that, oh yeah, well actually my friend suggested that I do it. And here's the deal. Who cares if that's the case? It's still a stupid ass reason to be upset at somebody. Even after she gets superpowers, she's still sour over that insignificant bullshit after she apologizes. It's 
fucking revolting how this scenario plays out. Mandy not needing to have any self-awareness on how much of a jackass she was towards her over such superfluous stuff. And instead, having the love interest bitch just bend the knee to her like a servile pet dog. Mandy's personality is Kentucky Fried Cancer, but it's not her that needs to change. It's the outside world. Wanna know why? Because everything revolves around her. There was not a target demographic in mind for the making of this piece of trash, but since the main character is a land whale ass edgelord goth girl, that is gonna be the primary demographic of people who read this. And teenage goth girls are stupid and impressionable, so when they read this all the way through, many of them are going to think it's perfectly acceptable to treat significant others this way. They're going to think it's totally cool to never develop a lick of self-awareness of themselves, and if their partner truly loves them, it's not not you that needs to change, it's your lover. I'm not overanalyzing this shit. This subplot legit validates toxic relationships, man. So, about generic best friend guy Lincoln. Remember how he was a stupid ass pseudo intellectual edgelord anarchist reddit user or whatever? Yeah, well, no, not anymore. Now, Lincoln's thought processes suddenly twist and turn into feeding Mandy's idiotic ego depending on the stupid ass situation. Literally one of the first things this cuck said was, eh, I'm gonna join college to destroy the system, eh, I'm blending in with the, the masses by wearing cologne, guys, look at me, L look at me, guys, pay attention to me, and, and now all of a sudden, this motherfucker is saying some fortune cookie shit. Right here, look at this. Look at page 155. Mandy's fat ass says, Eh, I thought you told me that immigrant kids were bound to be disappointments. And then this guy says, What I said was, we hold our parents' hope for a new future, but that future isn't necessarily going to be what our parents thought it would be. We have to face the future they gave us. Now all of a sudden this guy is saying some fortune cookie bullshit. This entire comic he's been nothing but either an edgelord or a beta male wingman. And now all of a sudden this guy is Mr. Miyagi the second the plot needs some dramatic sounding shit to say. This guy is a walking tool for Mandy. You want to know why? Because everything revolves around her. That is the purpose of this comic. Don't get it twisted. Don't think this is about anything else. So, about the final battle. I've already covered it in its entirety. It's the ultimate embodiment of Mary Sue plot armor. A 17 year old girl who just discovered her abilities suddenly having the skill and power level to beat a f***ing adult aged planet conquering warlord. That's the equivalent of me suddenly having the martial arts skills to beat Kimbo Slice in a cage fight because I took karate classes when I was 9. This stupid ass showdown Mandy has literally plays out like a third grader's underdeveloped power fantasy. Ah man, Starfire loses, but that's okay because uh, I come in, I get powers, and then I beat the bad guy up, and I beat him up good. When I beat the bad guy, I do curse words and big boy language, and I yell because I'm awesome. Oh yeah, also, also, I was actually beating the bad guy up in front of my school. So all my classmates like me now, all my classmates like me, they all like me and they will always like me forever and ever oh yeah and then that girl that girl that I, I don't have the self-confidence to talk to she's gonna like me a lot too and then we can hold hands at the playground this shit is so it's such blatant pathetic pitiful teenage power fantasy bullshit it's like I'm watching Ari Ferretta you want to know why Mandy suddenly has godlike combat skills? You want to know why? You want to know why? You, you want to know? Because everything revolves around her. So, about us, the readers. Do you see the connection with all of these things? We are not supposed to question any of these things, even though none of it makes a lick of sense. E even the title of the comic doesn't make sense. The name of the goddamn comic is called I Am Not Starfire, and she ultimately ends up becoming a more complete person the second she is forced into being just like Starfire. And guess what? That doesn't even slightly matter. Because what actually matters is, you guessed it, every single thing revolves around this girl. I'm sorry if I'm annoying anyone for raising my voice like this. I know I shouldn't be screaming. I know it just annoys people. But, um...
Yeah. Let's jump back into the discussion of this comic being a self-insert fantasy. I, I really don't even know why I'm calling this piece of trash a comic anymore. This is not a comic. What this is, is the random hazy memories of Mariko Tamaki's personal diary, illustrated and twisted around to alleviate her high school trauma. That's what this is. Guys, everything that happens in this comic that goes anywhere outside of basic high school cliches is way, way too specific to not be something that isn't just Mariko shoving her own teen trauma into this. It's no coincidence that Mandy says everything she would say and does everything she would do and thinks everything she would think. Mariko's psychological issues are reeking and dripping off of every page turn of this dumpster fire. Like, think about it. Why else is Starfire acting this way? Why would Starfire be modified to be a super specific, misogynistic stereotype of a single mother that Tamaki very clearly hates on a personal level outside of the comic? We already know that Mandy is Mariko's mouthpiece, so it would only make sense to jump to the further conclusion that Starfire is Mariko's personal punching bag for her own poor experiences with her own parents. Why else would she be characterized as a woman who needs to dress all skimpy to do her job, quote unquote, and bring strange men home all the time. The reason why Starfire is so out of character and out of personality is because it's not her personality. It's Mariko's mom's personality. There are so many completely illogical moments in the story that only make sense if you read this comic under the context that this is just someone projecting their own childhood trauma into the story. Why else would Mandy be going out of her way to complain about college when she canonically lives in a wealthy household? Because clearly it's something that Mariko Tamaki was complaining about in her past. I've been calling this comic a self-insert fantasy all review series, but I don't even think it's that anymore. If anything, it's more of a revenge fantasy, if anything else. You know, like those stupid-ass cringy stories on Tumblr where the girl always wins and everyone's supposed to stand up and clap at the end. Something like that. I am legitimately offended after reading this comic, okay? I, I legit am. Because this is not a comic. This is not someone trying to take the DC Universe lore and take it in a new or interesting direction. This is someone tearing that lore apart and re-piecing it together, all for the sake of reinforcing their own fragile ego. Guys, I, I, guys, I'm not even on script right now. Deadass, this Mariko Tamaki lady, this girl needs a friggin' reality check, dude. Normal people do not do what this girl does. And, and look, if she wants to make a pathetic fan fiction where all of her teenage trauma is twisted around in an alternate scenario to fulfill her sense of petty victory, whatever, you can do whatever you want, but not at the cost of making a renowned DC superhero look like a retard and not by disguising it as a comic that you're selling to people. Nobody paid for this shit trying to learn about your personal life barely veiled as a fiction. Look, I really don't like to talk about other creators on a personal level, and I don't want to judge people for making bad pieces of work, unintentional or otherwise, but when you make a story that's seemingly nothing but a disorganized collection of your personal diary, it's really hard not to. For all my OG fans, you guys remember in my High Guardian Spice videos when I described Ray Rodriguez to be a grown adult that is not mentally matured out of his own teenage Tumblr phase? Well, Mariko Tamaki is a grown, middle-aged woman that has not mentally matured out of her I'm not like other girls phase. And that is why I am not Starfire sucks. But we're still not done here. We're still not done. Stay tuned, boys. In the grand finale of this analysis series, we're going to find out who the hell is praising this garbage and why. To be concluded in Part 7. And let's not forget our fantastic supporters on Patreon. My $10 supporters are... Duke Dragon Hearthfire, the 10th. Elamations and Procrastinator Dave. My $5 donors are A. Yon, Dragonlight Z, Stormy Knight, Travis, and Wes Franklin. If you'd like to be in the credits of my videos as well, just catch me on Patreon.com slash BlacklightJack. Thanks for watching, boys.